intro a BC topic here now, which is uh, the area inside a polar curve. So I've made up this like fake polar curve uh, that R, some R that is a function of theta. And uh, and I want to find this red area from uh, the angle theta equals some alpha to some theta that is equal to beta. So I'm going to start by giving you the formula and then um, just so that you have it as a quick intro and then I'm going to walk through where the formula comes from because uh, I have, without knowing where some things come from, I find that I often forget a coefficient or I forget why something is squared or why it isn't. So just to be clear, I'm going to walk you through where it comes from. So this area for this red shape should be the integral from alpha, meaning the starting uh, of the two angles, like the lower angle, uh, to beta, right, the larger of the angles, and it's one half, uh, and then r squared with respect to theta. So my r is some function of theta, uh, it's one half r squared with respect to theta. So this is the formula you're going to use any time you're trying to find an area inside a polar curve. Um, for me personally, this is one that if I'm rusty at math, I inexplicably forget the one half. Uh, and, and what stopped me from forgetting the one half is figuring out where the formula actually came from. So again, if you want to stop listening to me now, the next example will show you how to find the area inside a polar curve. Uh, you are welcome to completely shut this video off and stop listening to me. If instead you would like to listen to me and figure out why there's a one half and where the r squared comes from, I'm going to do that right now. So, so let's talk about why, right? If we want to talk about why this works the way it works, right, because that's how we tend to remember things better, uh, what we want to think about is the fact that if we were looking at a circle, so like if we look at an old school regular, oh, that's a terrible circle, but you get the idea. Let's say we look at a circle. So there's a thing called a sector of a circle, which is essentially like a slice of pizza, right? Uh, it starts at the center, right, and it's an angle. Uh, so it's going to have some angle that I'm going to call theta, right? So if I wanted the area of this sector, which I'm going to call a sub s, right, uh, of this one slice of pizza, it would be pi r squared, because that's the area of the whole circle, times whatever percentage of the circle I was talking about, which since I'm in radians, would be a theta over 2 pi, right? So the area of this sector, right, would be pi r squared theta all over a 2 pi, which if I'm not mistaken, simplifies to the area of the sector being uh, the pi's will cancel, and I get a 1 half r squared theta. Well, what I want you to pretend is that when we're integrating, because this is what we do all the time when we integrate, we add tiny little slices up, right? So what I want you to recognize is that instead of this theta being a giant slice of the pi, when we integrate, what we're really doing is taking an infinitely thin slice of this chunk, right? An infinitely thin slice of pizza, right? And so instead of treating this as a theta, I'm going to say, oh, the area of one of these really, really tiny sectors, right? So the area of the infinitely small right, the area of my infinitely small slice that I'm looking at, it doesn't have a giant theta. What it has instead of a really big angle, it has a tiny, tiny, infinitesimally small uh, angle that we're going to call d theta. So not only is it, uh, does it have a really, really small uh, theta, but also the r isn't a constant. Like here r is a constant. This r in this formula is an r with respect to theta, right? Uh, it is not a constant, right? You, know, you can't really see that I'm writing that it is not a constant, but I'll move the board over. It is not a constant, right? So what I want to point out here is that, that really what's happening is the area of one sector is one half uh, of whatever that radius with respect to theta happens to be right now squared times the tiny, tiny angle, which is d theta, which means that the area of the whole shape should be the sum of all those sectors, right? The sum of the first sector, which started at alpha, to the last sector, which went to beta, right? Of my r of theta, quantity squared, which again, I can just call r as long as I know that it is a function of theta, uh, d theta. And that's where this formula comes from, is it's essentially like you're taking infinitely small slices of pizza and adding up every slice of pizza with its irregular radius until you get all the pizza. So that's where that formula comes from. <laughs>